the Dee's Nuts Garage. And this is day number three of us working on this 23 Ford Bronco. Now, what we're gonna be doing today is installing a rear Rough Country bumper. Now, this bumper matches the front bumper as far as the styling goes, but it, we're gonna have to do some more wiring on the back today because we're, we have a set of lights, I guess some floodlights or spotlights that are going in the back at the bottom of the bumper, and then we have some uh, what they call slim lights, and those slim lights are mounted somewhere in this general area of the bumper we're going to be putting on, and I'll show you that here in a minute when we get it all laid out on the table. <clears throat> but I'm going to have to do, I guess it's basically three things to wire up back here. First are the slim lights, and I'm going to have to, that's why I said I got to take this kick panel off because I need to access this tail light over here to tap into the reverse lights. The second thing is, is of course, the pod lights back here, or the flood lights. And from the factory, they do have a wire that runs from up front to back here that you can tap into. And that's, I'm assuming that's only if you order the upfitter switches, but maybe not. Once I show it to you, um, you'll be able to look back here on your vehicle and see if you have that wire. If it, you may have it and not have the upfitter switches. I'm not real for sure. So somebody knows for sure, comment down below. <clears throat> so that will be two of the three. And the third is the license plate bracket light. And when we order this bumper, the bumper does come with the relocation kit to put your license plate on the spare tire. Now we gotta go from over here to somewhere over there. So I'm assuming it's gonna, it comes with a, the, the wiring kit. So I'm assuming it's gonna come back up through here and it'll probably follow along this cable that you see right here. We'll try to fish it through this and it probably goes in here somewhere and then out there somewhere. So I'm hoping I don't have to remove this spare tire, but we may have to, so we'll just, Play it by ear and see how that goes. So let me take all this apart and I'll put it on time lapse. And then when I get all of it, the bumper removed and all this stuff <clears throat> out of the truck, I'll show you the bumper we're going to be installing and the lights we're going to be putting on it. Alrighty, so here's the bumper. Let me back out a little bit so you can see it all. Pod lights will be here. Did come in from the shipping with this right here on it. Such a heavy bumper. FedEx trying to deliver it. It does have a little nick on it. I'm going to take a little matte black paint with a little sponge and kind of boop, 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 and make that pretty again. Um, these are the slim backup lights that I'm going to be installing. This one's just kind of in place. It's not really there. And then uh, I'll show you the top. It's got some uh, decorative plates that go up here, right there, all through here. And then it's got some that goes through here and they're over here. These right here. And then these are the inserts for the pod lights. I guess you put that in there and then the pod lights go on it. That's for the front bumper if I didn't have the 20 inch light bar. And then here's some other kind of brackets. I have misplaced my installation guide somewhere, but being that I didn't use it on the front bumper, I guess I'll be all right without it. I'll figure it out. I'll check back when I'm, I'm gonna flip it over and install all these sensors and stuff like that. I gotta take the wiring harness out of that one. So I'll be back when I get all that done. 
All right, so I just wanted to come in here real quick since I didn't have, or I lost my install catalog or installation manual, whatever. I'm adding these little pockets right here and you'll see there's some little screws right there. And then on the back side, there's some of those. Here's a whole box of them. These are kind of tedious to deal with. I'm using like a Torx bit. Uh, well, on the end of this impact right here, it's a little Torx bit that I'm using instead of an Allen wrench, but I'm being really careful because you don't want to go stripping all that out. I think this is a 10 millimeter little lock wash, a uh, lock nut. And then I got these lights installed right here. I got my sensors installed. And I think the way this is supposed to go is this bracket right here. When I go to install this, it's gonna basically go right there. I have to undo my receiver bolts. And then right here, I'm gonna remove this tow hook and then undo these bolts right here for the bumper right here for another tow hook. And what happens is, is this part slides underneath, I believe, that right there, slides underneath it, and then your bolts go through right here. That, so it has a mounting point here, then there's another set right here, which is what I said that I removed my sever hitch and it slides right there and sits on that, and then there's some bolts that go there along with this, I'll call it a decorative plate right here. So I have, these four bolts is what's going to go through there like that those are going to be for the this and then i'm fixing to install this with all them little tedious little nuts and bolts i still haven't figured out what these go to but i'll figure it out here in a little bit so back to working on this bumper something else this is the factory wiring harness when you disconnect that these little tabs, don't cut those off. Keep them. Just leave them there. Because if you ever want to, say you're going to sell your truck or trade it in or something. Because, you know, if you trade it in, they're not going to give you any extra for this fancy-dancy bumper. You can reinstall your factory bumper, and then all those little clips will just pop right back into the factory location. But don't cut all them little clips off like these. Because you're going to reuse them. If you need to reuse them, they're still there. All right, so I got two things real quick. Should have said this in the very first video, but if you want to uh, get a copy of where all of uh, the color codes for your different auxiliary switches and their locations, I think I found this on 6Gen um, Bronco 6 Gen Facebook group, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold it like this right here. Maybe zoom in a little bit. You can pause this video and screenshot this and then print it out on your computer. So that way you have it. And back here, there's a wire that runs from the back of the truck to underneath the hood. And it's just a, on each end it's open. It's not hooked up to anything. And right here is what we're looking for. Number E, right hand rear quarter panel. The R, the it's white and orange. Now it's going to be the same color underneath the hood as well. <clears throat> and I'll show you this more when I'm up there doing the wiring. Now you can use this wire on any of these switches <clears throat> that you want. It's just this orange and a white and orange wire is what you're going to need to tap into if you're trying to not have to run a new wire from front to back now here's the right rear quarter panel and you have to take this loose and you have to go all the way up here in front of the amp you're going to see a little white and orange wire and you can see that it's not hooked up to anything i guess it's just an open wire so we're going to be tapping into that when we hook up these uh pod lights on the sides so just wanted to jump in here real quick and show you that and tell you where that's at because it is kind of hidden in a little tight spot all righty 
So I had to break a rule. I had to cut the loom. And the reason why is the factory harness from this sensor to this sensor isn't long enough. But there was plenty of, we'll say, playroom over here. And instead of cutting this wire and extending it, which is right here, I took it out of the, de-loomed it all the way back past this first sensor where the first sensor wire goes in. So now all I have to do, now it's long enough because of all the extra play over there. So now the sensor will plug in. And what I'm gonna have to go do is I gotta run to the parts store Get me some loom and some black tape and some uh, some other miscellaneous parts, uh, connectors and stuff like that I ran out. And then I'll just re-loom it, re-tape it, and then it'll be good to go. But I don't, I didn't want to cut this wire. So I was like, well, there's some over there. I'll just make it work. So I'm gonna have to re-loom all of this and then I'll re-loom this part to that sensor and everything should be good then, but I guess the way the bumper is made, the way the sensors are so far apart, it is what it is. But before you go cutting stuff, just cut your loom back really careful so you don't cut any of the wires. And then just re-loom it with some new loom. Alrighty, I'm back. So, in order to put this panel right here on, right there, let me back this camera out just a wee bit. Right there, I had to take the receiver off. And basically, this comes with four long bolts that runs through the receivers up there, then this plate, and then on the backer, it came with this. So in case you didn't have a receiver, I didn't install that because the back of the receiver has that bracket on the back anyway. So I'm not going to crush in this crash bar there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you real quick the bumper now i've got it all taped up and wire loomed it did come with these fancy little clips right there Let's see if i can get the slide on it if it'll stay this little clip right there it came with five of them so i got one there one there one there one there and then one there now i need to tighten those up and i'm probably going to put a little bit of zip tie right here to kind of pull that up a little bit so I'm going to finish up this bumper and then I'm going to reinstall it real quick and uh, test fit it. Only problem is, is these wires right here, that plate's going to go in. So I'm going to have to kind of be real careful when I slip this in there that I don't pop one of these wires. So I'm going to finish zip tying this up and then I'm going to install it and I'll come back and I'll show you what I've done. All righty. So it's on the truck now. Kind of rested it up on that and got to get those little four bolts aligned just right. Just be patient with it. And then you got two bolts under here that, like I said, held the tow hook on. On this side, there wasn't a tow hook, so it's still a bracket right there. That'll wind up coming off and you leave it off. Same as that side, there was a bracket right there as well with that tow hook. You leave them both off. So now what I got to do is I had to plug in the sensor plugs on this side and then on that side. Make sure when you plug those back in, you get a pair of big channel locks and squeeze them together until you hear it click. If you don't, what it's going to do is not read the sensors and it's going to throw a code up on the dash. But it's just because those are really tough to squeeze together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start pulling all these wires into the truck so that way I can um, wire it up. Alrighty, so there it is. All the lights are working, except those pod lights, because I got to wire them in the front when I do all that wiring in the front there. And uh, like I slid those slim lights down there, they work with the reverse lights. We have our license plate bracket back here. One thing is we have this little plastic trim cover. This little light really isn't long enough for these covers like this. But what I did is there was a piece of this little rubber thing. And um, I just kind of cut it at a half a half circle and then kind of cut out the center of it so I could use that as a spacer 
to pull this light out for it to shine on this plate. Knowing now what I know, I would have went and got me another one of these little nuts. Probably was one over here in this pack, and I could have used that to space this light out a little further. But that little rubber thing is working just fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the truck around, take the truck out, spin it around, and come back in, and then start wiring up all the lights. All righty, so now we are back under the hood, and I still haven't put them hood struts on. So I'm going to show you two sets of wires, and this kind of confused me at first uh, when we got this truck. Sorry for the light, but it's LED and it does that. Um, you have a set of wires coming from your upfitter switches, and then you have a set of wires that go to other places. There's one that goes like right here. Here's one. This is like a dummy wire. It's not hooked up to anything on either end, but what it's for is for you to add accessories. Maybe you want to add some of these lights. You can. You can use that to tie into this. Now, these are just going to be on all the time when the truck's running. But here's one, and there's some, uh, like that sheet of paper I had showed earlier. It tells you where these are located. Now, coming up here, this little gaggle of wires right here, you can see the ends are capped off. And then there's this one, this one right here too. These are going to the upfitter switches. And then if you look down here, let me move this stuff out of the way. If you look down here, so here's another set of wires. And these are the dummy wires that go to the, all different parts of the truck. And we're going to be finding our orange and white wire, and that's going to run our... Um, the lights that are in the bumper that face off to the side that's going to that upfitter switch right here so here's a little gaggle here and then there's a little gaggle of wires here so using the color code chart that's on that little piece of paper that i have that you can download just by pausing that video and screenshotting it and then printing it out on your printer it's going to tell you where all these different wires are and which upfitter switch that it is you can kind of tell this one right here is the biggest wire well i ain't even showing it here this biggest wire right here this is probably going to be switch number one because it is like a 30 amp uh, circuit and that's going to be running our 20 inch light bar in the front and then these other ones here they are 10 and then i think this yellow one right here may be a 10 and the this green one is a 15. so the yellow one here and then these other three right here in my hand these three they are tens so uh check it tells you on that little piece of paper of what they all are and i'll just show you this little piece of paper again move it over here where we can see it maybe so that's going to tell you everything you need to know see over here it tells you your fuse lamps and all of that and then these are all the dummies and then where they're located at so i'm going to get back over here and get all this wired up and when i do i'll come back and show you the finished product right there if i can get the camera going um uh, just so that way you see how everything works and uh, i'll be done with it all righty i got all the lights hooked up except for the ones in the bumper i couldn't find that orange and white wire that i was talking about in the back of the truck up front so there's three wires that's located somewhere else um if you know where those other three wires are underneath the hood that go to the back and i think there's a couple of other places that they go like i said i only found three wires uh, put it in the comments down below i'm going to do some more research to figure out where that goes now i'll walk you back around here to the back of the truck out here in the middle of our cornfield yeah those lights right there i gotta find that other wire of course, when you put it in reverse, the slim lights will come on. But I think it looks pretty good. Everybody gives Rough Country a bad name. I think they're a lot better than they used to be. Everything we've gotten from them seems to fit perfectly. And I haven't had any issues with it. Like I said before, we even have the powered running boards right there. So I think they are do pretty good. And the other thing is, is basically they're about... 
eh, 50 miles away from where I live. So I could technically drive over there and pick up my parts if I wanted to. Give a shout out to them. Maybe they'll throw some more parts my way. So that's going to be the end of the video. I hope y'all liked it. It's, it could, be in a, could have been a long video. Could be a short video. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to edit this to make it one long video or three videos. So if you like the truck, give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below if you got any questions. And sorry for the shaky camera. Y'all have a good day and I'll see you in the next video.